So, screen sharing is on, Camtasia capturing is on, and we are back to our mail process.php file. Um, I was thinking about actually if you have uh, still sound problems or if you experience sound problems, you might check if your um, webcam is also online via TeamViewer. That means um, uh, I'm deliberately not sharing my video um, picture here uh, because, well, I wasn't in the shower <laughs> this morning, first of all, and uh, I would also like to save some bandwidth for the um, transmission signal here. You might check if your uh, webcam is disabled because we don't need your um, webcam input for this session, and I don't want to see your faces. Right. We are meeting again on Thursday. Hmm? Good. So, just kidding, by the way. Um, the mail process dot PHP. Um, I spent some time now explaining it again, and that was actually quality time we spent on the script. Now uh, I'm keen uh, on. I'm teaching in my pajamas, and yeah, <laughs> oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Good, no. Hey, so please focus on the script. No, you will never know ever. So focus on the script. Mail underscore process dot php, and. Um, where we left off, right? So I explained how we uh, were using the variable variable to create a set of temporary variables here containing the key names as variables together with their values. And um, this would kind of conclude the for each loop. Right. So the result would be of this for each loop that we traced the whole post array arriving that we either stored empty keys if they are required in the missing array, formatted them as a new variable containing an empty string, or that if it just was expected that we stored it with a variable variable and the original value. Good. So, now let's proceed. Let's do something new here. The for each loop is concluded. So, probably I add some deliberate blank space here. So, that's getting a bit higher up on the screen. The for loop is um, concluded here. And we need now to um, to establish a condition what is happening if something is not missing, missing if it's not in the missing array. So, first um, try to type as I do and then we will explain this line for line. So, set a condition So, returning to the script, like if, set a new if condition here. And then we are first of all, not in, in order not to get confused later on, the general syntax of this if condition. And then as a condition, set this one, exclamation mark, array missing. And then we would do something. Now, anyone on the chat can explain what does this mean? Exclamation mark missing. What does this mean? Exclamation mark dollar sign missing. Suska, if the variable missing doesn't exist. Yeah, that's kind of right. And what is missing referring to, actually? So, if we don't have missing, 
what is missing? So then <laughs> sorry, that is probably not properly expressed. Not what is missing, but what is missing. So what is quotation marks missing? No, not the required fields. So missing No, missing is actually like 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 Susanna pointed out. If it's not existing, right? And what is not existing? The missing array. Or if it's empty, right? Yes, F, as as Andrea uh, put it, it right. So if the missing array is empty or not existing, does this mean? That means if the loop did not push any element inside the missing array. Right? So that means this one here is happening if there is nothing inside the missing array. So that means if, well, basically you could say now we are proceeding the information, or, or now, now we are processing information if everything arrived as required and expected. So I'm going to add a comment here. Processing information if everything arrived as expected and required. So if everything is fine we do the following. First of all, we are initializing a new variable. And this variable is called message. A message from the bathroom uh, in a bottle. So, like an empty string. This is basically just initializing a new message as an empty string in order to avoid also notices that the variable is still undefined. Message, later on, will hold all submitted information. So that's where we are going to store all the information we received inside and the variable message is used later on actually to send this as a mail. So here we are just initializing it. So and then, so if, nas if nothing is missing we can now loop through the expected array because the expected array should contain all the information we um, yeah well we can expect from the form right so please start another for each loop for each and then we've got the variable expected as item standard array loop right and open and close the brackets so that we are not getting confused by the overall structure of this script so this is referring to the expected array referring to the expected array. Probably I should put exacted in quotation marks. So now we are running through the expected array, getting the keys out as items. Right? Expected array is set here in form check. Expected was everything from the form but then again nothing more. So we expect to arrive 
to, to, to have to deal with the key name, with the key email and with the key comments. Well, and then of course with the key send, but we can just ignore this because this key would just contain our send button. So, for each loop, if everything is arriving as expected and required, then set a new variable and run through the array expected. This is what this means. Now it's getting really complicated. Try this. Suska? You've got a problem? If you got a problem, try Tobasco on your socks first. Otherwise, I'm going to proceed. So, if inside this for each loop we are setting an if condition. So, first, in order, you can see that the structure is getting rather complicated now, so continue forming the general structure first. If and now we are going to um, establish a method which is able to detect first of all what is in the expected array of this part the loop takes care of and then we are going to see is something submitted or is it empty because we have also optional fields right that means a user probably is not submitting any comment so we are looking inside the expected array and trying to detect does a key exist and is it probably empty and you probably guessed it we are calling the is set function again here so first of all I'm checking is set and now comes the brain teaser is set variable variable item are we going to have a look at this later and the AND operator, conditional AND operator, AND if it's not empty variable variable item and closing. then do something. So, what is done here? We are going to have a look on shortly. Now, I just would like you to hold on a second and think about what actually is happening here. What the hell is happening here? If is set very variable item and if it's not empty the very variable 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 item hmm so what might the variable variable item contain yes andrea you named it actually so what we are going to um, to make is the same operation as we did before right so we are kind of getting the keys out of the array that would be normal procedure but then at the same time we are transforming them into a new variable 
and the result as Andrea posted on the chat would be for each element a variable with a key name like variable name, variable email and variable comment and then the variable send is also submitted but forget about the send button and this is set method is only performable on variables right so you cannot check if a certain key is set well at the same time it's also formatting and introducing a new variable so exactly so if the variable name for instance exists and if it's not empty then do something now we are going to use the variable variables again first of all we are introducing a new variable called val short form for value right and we are assigning the variable variable item to it Brian, you clicked. Can I help you? No, it was just a deliberately, it was not a deliberately click. It was a sorry mistake. Doesn't matter. So probably I should um, explain this a bit more elaborate here so I'm going to make a slash asterisk comment here the variable variable item creates a new variable name from field name if the variable exists and well, if it's not empty its value is stored in val the variable val so that's how variable variable our variable variables are working right this creates a new variable from an arriving field name if it exists and if it's not empty the value is assigned in the variable value now because we are assigning the whole variable here that means each time a new value would arrive here so now careful with the brackets this is if it's not empty but we have also to take care of the option that probably a not required field is not filled out like in our in our case probably no comment is submitted and Ria you clicked on its value is stored in the variable value Now we are checking if it's not empty. Is this clear? Probably? Well, um, the variable is already set because this is actually the same thing as this so we have the variables
you cannot hear me now you should be able to hear me right so we are we are running through the expected loops again now as items the trick is that this is returning exactly the same thing as here right it does again now it's checking does the variable variable item is it set and and um and it is set but probably not the comments right because this here was referred this is referring to the required array and this to the expected array right and this is running once more through the expected array now in order to detect is there anything empty so if this is if this is not empty and would be the case if comments were submitted then store the value also or and that is what I was about to construct right now after the if condition closes that means after the first bracket we are going to take care of if actually for instance the comments field would not be filled out else the variable value would contain a string not submitted this is later on for the user feedback what the user had submitted so if a comment in this case would have been submitted by the form we would be able to catch the value here if the for if the comments would be not submitted then the value not submitted is stored in the variable value good i think we should conclude uh, the whole script it's actually not much which is missing here so and then you can uh, go ahead and try reflecting on the script here then you see then you've got the whole picture right so um, this would create a string not submitted if the expect if there's any expected field submitted but not filled out now still inside the if condition but under the loop we are taking up the variable message and then we are doing something strange something which you haven't come across so far set a dot and an assignment operator going to explain what this does then call uc first and now strangely not on the very very variable variable item but on the variable item itself So, as you can see, now we are actually um, formatting the output we are getting if nothing is missing, right? So, here we introduce the message as an empty string, then we run the loop with some results, and then we are formatting here our message. You see first, used on item will 
well take the key name from the array capitalize the first letter because as you probably remember the array keys are always starting with small letters this is also for the user input later on just to make it a bit more readable so this will result in name with capital N email with capital E it's only for user input so um, and then we are concatenating this one here together with a colon just keep in mind that this is really strictly for user output and put out the variable well and add a blank space and a semicolon sorry I detected a mistake here in my script of course this here does not um, it must not be outside the loop so because this is supposed to be performed each time the loop is running so I need to extract it and actually put it here because this bracket here concludes the for each loop right F for for each loop if we take this from inside this would be the else condition this would be the if condition and this is the for each loop and of course we need to run this every time the loop is performed in order to get all the items out good but I still owe you to explain what the colon assignment upper uh, what the uh, dot assignment operator actually is and I'm going to add a comment here the syntax dot equal is the so-called concatenation assignment it's not the concatenation operator this would be the dot only but the dot together with an assignment operator is the concatenation a concatenation assignment a concatenation assignment as well you probably can figure out is adding this string operation each time to message so the concatenation assignment is um, kind of uh, forming a continuous string here and Susanna is thinking that I have one bracket too much you probably mean my teeth why would I have a message a bracket too much well I'm not receiving any script error just click on the on on the on the bracket you think which is too much this one okay no um, you know this is comes from the if condition right everything is performed here if um, nothing is missing but I'm also happy to um, concludes the if condition yeah well you can you can you can lose yourself you can get lost in those brackets this is programmers fate get lost not in transitions get lost in transition but uh, lost in brackets by the way did you saw lost in transition Bill Murray and the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola I think great movie so if you're really blue uh, if you're feeling blue one evening then get yourself a copy of lost in well is it called lost in transition or lost in translation Well, anyway, lost in transition or lost in translation? <laughs> lost in translation, yes. 
I think also that's right more. Uh, Brian, thanks. Lost in translation. Very, very nice, calm, intelligent movie. So, concludes the if, con the if condition. So, um, the concatenation assignment stores a, well, I would call this a continuous, continu continuous, continuous string in message. So, this is like adding uh, additional information all the time. Well, basically, you could say this is the string equivalent to an incrementer. Yeah, that's pro that's actually a um, a good explanation. So each time this is called, it will take a new key. That means name or email or something like this, and then put this inside message. So eventually, so you will re re receive a long string here as as message as message like um, name is Batman, email is Batman at Robin dot bat and uh, um, at least a comment if submitted. Now, if the comment is filled out, you will get the comment itself here, right? But if the comment was not submitted, then you will get a comments not submitted. Not submitted with Bill Murray, right? Yes, Mikkel. And Sophia, Sophia Ford Coppola, I think. I think she uh, directed also this movie and it wa it's amazing work. So for you all this evening, mandatory program lost in translation. Lost in code. Hmm? Anyway. Bad? What do you mean bad? Batman? Batman? Breaking Bad the movie. I never heard about Breaking Bad the movie. Hmm. Breaking Batman, yeah. Well, that was actually the subject of the last Batman movie, right? Um, that was actually a great Batman movie. Um, was it called The Dark Knight Returns or something like that, right? So the latest, the very latest Batman movie shows how Batman is broken actually, and he literally break his back, is breaking his back. Um, so that is a um, superhero demolition movie. Uh, I liked it. It's very dark. Um, Batman is very vulnerable actually in this in this movie. Uh, this is also a uh, superhero movie. I'm not that uh, a great fan of superhero movies, but the latest Batman film is also recommended. The Dark Knight Rises. Yes, Miguel. Thanks. Yes, uh, Breaking Breaking Bad matter. You never seen it? Well, I can't recommend this series for uh, uh, too much. This is. Breaking Bad is one of the best TV series ever made. I promise. Good. Um, now let's conclude the script here. Let's try to break even then at least with PHP. I don't want you all to master it, but you need to break even. So, uh, we were able now to detect if anything was missing and we were able to store everything in a variable message which, use, which, is, which is using a concatenation assignment to get all uh, the values. So, and I take care of a post of method. The only problem is that you can hear the voice of the bad guy. You mean, you mean me? No, has been put in after the shooting of the movie. It's way louder than everyone else. I can't remember his name. I feel ashamed. Bane. Okay, Mikkel. Well, you should be. Um, you should try to get inside this. Who wants to be a millionaire, right? At at least as a film expert, it's incredible. You're um, ready at hand knowledge. Mm.
Yes. Well, while you are talking, um, matter about the Dark Knight Rises, I'm talking about PHP. The Dark Matter Rising. With the cat clawed in her feet. PHP the movie, yes, now live on stage. <laughs> PHP reloaded soon. <laughs> right? Good. Well, I promise there is, um, at least in the mail process script, not much to follow. Let's conclude this. Let's have a lunch break then, and then we can uh, tie up the missing ends here. Because what we are doing now is actually redirecting, and then we can at least test our script. Then we can start testing it. Redirecting to a thank you To a thank you bugger page after submitting after for after after information was processed. Right? Just to give well this is first of all to test our script and um, then to uh, redirect the user to a page where he is getting a feedback on what he actually submitted together with a big thank you. You should always be polite to your users. Um, so, um, in order to see if everything was performed correctly here, right, we finally just need to check what well, does the message exist. So let's try this. If message. So if we got any message, then do the following. And this would conclude in the first step our script here. So if we got a message here, let's try this first of all. Yeah, let's try to echo message then we know that the script at least performs. Now we never tested this. If we did everything okay here, we should be able to output any message arriving. Yeah, and that is actually the point where we could test our script on a web browser. So that means I'm not getting first of all syntax error of my mail process PHP. I have my form check ready. Now if we made the right uh, connections, uh, if we if we didn't then we have uh, some lunch time to uh, debug our script. But if everything was all right, then we should be able now to submit information from our form. Then it should be processed here by our um, mail process script and lastly we should have at least an echo output of what was exactly submitted. So try this in a browser. Well of course you should not test the mail process dot PHP but the form check PHP in a browser. So here we are. That would be my default browser. Now um, loading the contact form. Well, let's see what's going to happen. It's always an exciting moment, the first test. Let us submit a name. Bad Bane. Breaking necks add hate mail dot com comments. I know where you live. Hmm. So 
Let's see if Bad Bane would be able to contact us. Yes! 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 Well, it's actually a contact, a contact I'm not looking quite forward to. But um, everything is as expected. Right, so Bad Bane could submit his email and could submit a content which is caught in messages. Now I would like to try um, the following no comment submitted. Name Spider Man email Spider. at net.net comments lost my net connection no sorry comment we don't want we don't want a comment of spider-man well Basically, he's also just a teenager, right? Contact us, Spider-Man. Yeah, you see? Comments were not submitted, so I get the submit output. Um, you guess it, later on we are going to transfer exactly this information to a thank you page. Good. I um, would like to say, well, thank you, first of all, for this first part of the session. I think we should have a lunch break. At least I'm hungry now. And um, then we're starting some debug debugging, probably, after lunch break on the script. And we will really do this um, redirection to another page and meta get the comments not submitted even though I write something in the comment field Louisa are we still ending this session at 12 o'clock mm, uh, well I would say we are we are ending uh, we are ending this session right now and then I really would like to connect again at 12 o'clock and add half an hour to the session so that we really stopping 12 30 if this is convenient right so we meet again at 12 o'clock and uh, um, the last part here of the whole script that means redirecting to another page um, will not take um, a, an awful lot of time good yes so let's meet again at 12 30 and um, we are mean and leave Meta alone with her problem, so um, that she has she has to do some serious thinking why her comments are not submitted, right? But I don't think this has something to do with the quality of Meta's comments. Must be a programming routine. I'm hungry. Sure, you are as well. Um, meet you again at twelve o'clock exactly. No, um, I said, Andrea, we're meeting again at 12 o'clock and then we are finishing the whole thing for today at 12.30. Right? So, um, thank you and let's meet again at 12 o'clock.